Good morning. It is Thursday, December 10th, and we are in the second week of Advent. And as we come into our time of daily prayer for Advent, we begin by lighting our Advent candles, two candles this week for the second week of Advent. As we come into this time of daily prayer, I remind you that some of the prayers and scriptures that we will have this morning will be the same as those we have as we have been having all week and that we will continue through this second week of Advent because in the repetition becomes the familiarity that allows us to reflect more and more deeply and um, intimately on the words that we are saying. And um, our scripture that is when we come to that time will become come to us from the Jesus Storybook Bible. I've been sharing that resource with you this season because I really appreciate the way that the authors have taken um, the word from scripture and stayed very true to it, but in very poetic and picturesque ways, they have been able to share the great arc of God's story and the gift of Christ to us and how that gift is pointed to all throughout the scripture. And so as we come into this time of prayer with the music, with the Bible story, with the prayers and all that we will share, um, we come together in this time of daily prayer. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. In the beginning, Lord, I was alone, like the earth before your spirit moved over the waters. I was formless and empty, and darkness filled the depths of my heart. Then it was as if you declared, let there be light, and out of the darkness I began to see hope, like a shimmering ray of love breaking through the parting clouds at the conclusion of the night. In the beginning, Lord, I was alone. But when I saw you in the light, I was no longer afraid. You held out your hand, and though I had a choice, I had no choice. Because to refuse was to embrace again the darkness. In the beginning, Lord, I was alone. Now I am again a part of your creation. Loved, wanted, needed family. In the light of your presence, I hold out my heart that others might glimpse through it your reflection and be drawn from the darkness that I once embraced into the light of your sunrise, the brightness of your face. Lord Jesus, Son of God, Savior of the world, be the center of all that we are and the life that we lead. Lord Jesus, light in this dark world, Illuminate our hearts and minds. Be the center of all that we are and the life that we lead.
And then from John chapter 1. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. We come now into a time of silence, and during this silence, you may like to read and reflect on the words of the scripture that have been read, and I will put those back up for you. You may choose to look and gaze into light that you have lit, a candle or a lantern, or you may just want to close your eyes and simply enjoy the peace and the calm of God's presence. We come into our time of silence. In the lonely places, the wilderness where we stand forlorn, windswept and alone, your voice calls out, prepare a way for the Lord. In the dark places, the shadows where we hide our fears, embrace our tears, your voice calls out, prepare a way for the Lord. For the desert places in which we walk, the streets we roam, the paths we cross, guide our feet, take us to places where you would go. Give us words that you would use, that in this Advent season of promise and preparation, we might point the way with John the Baptist to the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. O come, thou dayspring from on high, and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come again, and with us ever dwell. As we come to our scripture today, we have uh, we are looking at scriptures that come from Exodus 3 through 13 in the Jesus Storybook Bible that is summarized in this chapter, which is entitled God to the Rescue. Joseph and his brothers grew old and died, but their children's children stayed on in Egypt where they became a very large family. Later on, a new king began to rule, but this Pharaoh did not remember Joseph and he did not like God's people. He made them into his slaves and he beat them and made them work harder and harder. God's people cried out to God to rescue them and God heard them. He remembered his promise to Abraham. He would look after his people. He would find a way to set them free. One day Moses was looking after sheep when something caught his eye. A bush was behaving very oddly. It was flickering with flames, but its leaves weren't burning up. He took a closer look. Moses boomed a big voice. Moses leapt back. The bush was talking to him. I have heard my people's cries, God said. I have seen their tears, so I have come down to rescue them. Go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go free. Moses was afraid, but God said, I will be with you. So Moses went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, Moses began. God says, God said, no, I never heard of him. Moses kept going. God says, let his people go free. Why should I, Pharaoh said, don't want to, won't. And so he didn't. So God gave Pharaoh 10 warnings called plagues. First, God turned the river Nile into blood. No one could drink the water, but still Pharaoh would not let them go. So God made frogs come hopping and leaping and jumping in your, fro in your bed, frogs in your hair, frogs in your soup, frogs all over everywhere, frogs. 
Make them go away, Pharaoh screamed, then your people can go. So God took the frogs away, but Pharaoh changed his mind. You can't go, he said. Then God sent zillions of gnats, but still Pharaoh said no. So then God sent swarms of flies, flies buzzing in your eyes, flies. And after that sickness and horrible boils and huge hailstones and a storm of locusts, then darkness when it should have been day, until it seemed that the whole world, creation and everything was coming undone, falling back into darkness and emptiness and nothingness. But each time Pharaoh said, make it stop and then I'll let them go. And each time when God made it stop, Pharaoh changed his mind and said, actually, no, you can't go. Finally, Moses warned Pharaoh, obey God or he will have to send the worst thing of all. Pharaoh just laughed. So God said the oldest boy in each family of Egypt must die, but my people will be saved. God told his people to take their best lamb, to kill it, and to put some of its blood on their front doors. When God passes over your house, Moses explained, God will see the blood and know that the lamb died instead of you. That night it was just as God had said. Suddenly, piercing the darkness, echoing down the corridors of the palace, came a blood-curdling scream. Pharaoh's oldest son had died. At last, Pharaoh did just what God said. Get out, Pharaoh shouted just go. And so that very night, Moses and God's people fled out of Egypt and out of slavery. They were free at last. God's people would always remember this great rescue and they would call it Passover. But an even greater rescue was coming. And many years later, God was going to do it again. He was going to come down once more to rescue his people. But this time, God was going to set them free forever and ever. So we think of God's rescue plan set in motion and how he called Moses to be such an important part of that plan. We hang the, the burning bush as our ornament on our Jesse tree this morning.
come now into our time of prayer as we hold those names and the situations that are on our hearts and in our minds this morning before the Lord. And as we do, we do as we have been all week and as we will continue to do so, we imagine that circle, that surrounding of God's care and God's love around our, around us as we come before him in prayer and around those for whom we pray. So we come now before this before the Lord in this time of prayer. Circle us, Lord. Circle us with the light of your presence bright within this dark world. Enable us to be overcomers of fear and temptation. Enable us to be victors over sin and despair. Enable us to become that which you would desire. In silence we pray. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, circle us with the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord, circle our family within the shelter of your outstretched arms. Protect them in each moment of their daily lives. Protect them in the decisions that they face. Protect their homes and relationships. In silence we pray. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, circle our families with the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord, circle this nation with Advent love and hope. Create a desire to listen to the Advent message. Create a willingness to understand and respond. Create a need to reach out to the Christ child. In silence we pray. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, circle our nation with the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord, circle this world with the joy of your salvation. Where there is sickness and disease, bring healing. Where there is hunger and despair, bring hope. Where there is torture and oppression, bring release. In silence, we pray. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, circle this world with the light of your presence. Lord, thou hast given us thy word for a light to shine upon our path. Grant us so to meditate on that word and to follow its teaching, that we may find in it the light that shines more and more until the perfect day through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, have a blessed day. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.